Hello everybody, Chris here, and we're on experiment 15, and this is a pretty cool experiment because we are uh, making use of a new magnetic switch that came with the uh, uh, kit of parts, and it's pretty nifty. Um, I don't want to bring it uh, up to the camera because I've kind of got it plugged in, but the idea is um, you got a you know, three post setup here, and these uh, represent uh, just your typical latching setup. So, in one setup where these are touching or near each other, that the uh, you know magnets are actually engaged, uh, the circuit's connected between these two posts. And the idea is, is if you pull this apart, and you probably won't to hear this, but we can try. Listen right here. Not sure if you can hear that, but there's a little clicking going on. So when it's like this, these two posts are actually connected. And when you pull it apart and it clicks, that's the latching uh, causing the uh, connectivity between uh, to be between either these two posts or these two posts. I think it's I think it's between uh, these two posts. So it moves between these like this. And the idea is these um, bolt onto like usually like a window or a door or something, and they are just your standard stuff for you know home security systems. So um, you know the idea is if someone cracks open a window or opens a door up, that the uh, the magnets become you know disengaged once they're a certain distance apart, just by the sheer strength of the magnet, and it. Uh, causes your circuit to actually go live and uh, sound an alarm or maybe a silent silent alarm that actually calls the police or something. So the circuit for this is pretty simple and surprisingly efficient. Uh, it's cool because you know one design would be while this is um, you know armed you might think hey this thing's drawing a lot of power um, but in reality this thing actually draws no power um, except when somebody cracks the window open. So, um, how this works, actually, I like to do this this way. I will, um, I will turn this on, I will watch it real quick. And this is gonna run on um, uh, 12 volts. So I'm just gonna dial this up and bring this up to 12 volts. So give me just a sec here, we're up to about eight so far. 10, 11, 12, 12 exactly, there we go. So um, as you can tell, there's no uh, activity going on in the light, but if I separate this, it lights up. And looking at my variable power supply over there, it's telling me it's pulling 20, 20 milliamps, which makes sense because that's the only uh, the LED is the only component in this circuit that's actually drawing any power right now and if I were to bring these back together again the light will go off and the uh, current draw is now zero there's nothing being drawn in this circuit so it's pretty cool because you know you're not wasting energy unless someone actually you know breaks into your little uh, security zone so um, the next step uh, that's in this chapter involves switching out the LED for a relay. But before we get to that, I should explain how this works. So let me cut the power, since we don't really need that anymore. Um, so we have a standard 2N2222 transistor. So this is a NPN. And that means it's a uh, you know sandwich with the positive uh, pin being the gate. So if we uh, look at the circuit here, we've got uh, a resistor uh, coming from positive to the uh, collector pin, and we've got a, another resistor uh, going from positive to the gate. And 
we've got a uh, switchable, you know, component here coming from a negative that leads to the gate as well. So reviewing what NPN transistors uh, are all about, we know that we want the gate pin to be sufficiently positive in order to actually amplify the current that uh, is uh, wanting to flow through the uh, uh, collector pin. Uh, but, you know, since the uh, gate pin is right now, um, with, with this circuit closed, there's a, a lot of uh, uh, negative uh, also um, impacting the gate pin. So the gate pin is not sufficiently positive right now, so really there is no current being amplified from the collector to the emitter. And um, when that's the case, nothing, no current's being uh, pushed out, out here through the LED, so this won't light up. Um, now if we pop this open, and we hear the little click, then what happens is we no longer have any kind of uh, negative uh, contributions going to this gate pin, only the positive side of the circuit. And that makes the uh, uh, gate pin um, sufficiently positive. So that allows us to amplify the current flowing through the uh, collector to the emitter. So what we're going to do now, since we tested that out, is we're going to use a uh, relay switch. And we used this guy um, back in I don't know, maybe it was like experiment four or five. And, uh, well, sorry about that. My dog distracted me. Um, so we are going to use this guy. And instead of uh, using the resistor on the input of our uh, NPN, we don't really need him anymore because this uh, relay can support up to 12 volts. Uh, so we are pretty safe to just use it with no... Oh, actually, you know what? I take it back. This guy can support up to 30 volts. So yeah, we're only going to be pushing uh, 12. So we're going to take this guy out. And we're just going to replace him with a uh, straight, straight line. The reason that uh, resistor was there is because we wouldn't want current um, directly flowing through an LED because it would just burn out. Got to protect those guys. So now we've got. Let's see if I can actually push that in. There we go. So we've got our power running to our collector pin, and um, keep the same switching mechanism in place. And we've got our out right here. And we know from past experience that when we're dealing with a relay. The two pins that are separate from the others are the actual pins that uh, internally go through the coil and uh, create the magnetic uh, field around the wire uh, that pushes the latch, that controls the latching that jumps between these two uh, possibilities on both sides. So we want to put, put it down so that these two pins uh, correspond with the output of our, uh, our NPN. So let me just make sure I line this up right. And that looks good. So, let's make sure this works. Now, in this case, when I pull this guy away, um, we should hear the relay click uh, and go hot. And when we close it back up, this guy should click again and go cold. And uh, the power supply should uh, also confirm that, you know, hey, we're only drawing current in this when it's open. And when it's closed, this guy should be drawing no current. So let me turn this on. I think we are... Yep, we look good. Alright. So I'm going to bring it back up to 12 volts one more time. That was just my uh, potentiometer and my... Uh, supply clicking, not the circuit itself over here. Or rather, not my potentiometer, but my uh, my relay in the power supply. 
All right, so we're up at 12 volts, and there's no current being drawn from the circuit right now, so nothing is actually, there's no power flowing through this because these guys are touching, or close enough. So I'm going to pull it apart, and I heard the relay click, and we're drawing around 40 milliamps, 40 or 45, I'm not sure, don't have that granularity, but somewhere in the, the 40s. So, um, tells us that this relay uh, is actually about twice the, uh, twice the power hog as an LED, which is really not that efficient, all things considered, because really all that's happening here is some currents flowing through a wire to, to repel a uh, latch. So you'd think that that wouldn't really cost us much more than an LED, but it costs us like twice as much. It's pretty surprising. So there we go. We heard the uh, heard the relay click back, and we're not drawing any power. So that's pretty much all there is to this circuit. Now what's going to come up in our next part, I'll, I'll have to do this uh, in another video at some point, but the idea in the next uh, upcoming section here is, is when you separate these guys, like if someone breaks into your house and opens the window, relay goes hot, calls the police, let's say the guy is really nice and he's like, hey, I'm going to close your window, you know, I'll just, you know, be a gentleman. Well, if he does that, you wouldn't want the relay to go cold again and say, oh yeah, you know, no problem. So in the next uh, part, we will figure out how to keep this relay uh, hot once the alarm has been triggered, even if the switch is brought back. So I'll see you guys then.